Well, welcome everyone to this session. Um, this session we are hosting uh, Andrew Leventis, who is one of our uh, painting instructors here at UNC Charlotte. Uh, I'm just going to introduce him briefly. Um, Andrew has has a, a pretty vast experience, uh, not just with painting, but with exhibiting, um, not just nationally, but internationally. Um, he has been featured in Norway. I know he's been in Rome. And Andrew, I know you just uh, exhibited uh, last year. Was it last year when you were in London? Um, and, yeah. you know, he, he definitely gets around uh, for sure. Um, he has a um, a bachelor's of, of fine arts and painting from American Academy of Art in Chicago, um, as well as a master's of fine art um, from Goldsmiths College, uh, University of London. Um, so, Andrew, we're so excited to have you here today talking about this really awesome topic. It's a topic that I'm certainly very interested to learn more about and just really appreciate your expertise. And students, as you come in, as you listen to Andrew today, uh, feel free to put questions into the chat as he's talking. And then we'll also open it up at the end for your questions as well. Well, then, Andrew, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Suzanne, and thank you so much for having me. Um, I know we've had this on the books for a little while and it got delayed and uh, now it's back on and it's online and whatever form this is now. And so I'm, I'm happy to be doing this. I've, I've looked forward to it for a long time. So thanks. And, and yeah, as Suzanne said, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat and I'll do my best to kind of answer them. But um, what I'd planned to do was talk for um, about 30 minutes or so. Is that okay, Suzanne? Does that sound good to you? And you can, yeah, you can interrupt me anytime that we need to wind it down. But I wanted to talk a little bit about um, commercial gallery spaces, applying to exhibits, um, having your own exhibits kind of in an alternative way to the gallery system, uh, and then places that you can search for exhibition opportunities in Charlotte and beyond too. So I do have a PowerPoint to share with you. So I'm going to attempt to share it now. Okay, if I do this, okay, you guys can see that. And full screen, thumbs up. Yeah, okay, cool. Awesome, thanks, Aaron. <laughs> um, so, okay, just kind of starting out, um, I thought I would I'd put my information up here for you guys if uh, you wanna contact me. So this is what I do. Uh, I'm a professor in painting here in the Department of Art and Art History. Here's my email. So if you do have any questions or if you want to follow up with me, um, if you have good ideas for ways for students to collaborate with each other or exhibition ideas, places to apply, please follow up and let me know. I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Um, just to kind of give a little bit of background um, about me, um, I hope this helps. So I, I kind of come a bit from a commercial gallery background. Um, that's what I was doing before I started teaching. And so now I'm, you know, doing my best effort to kind of keep the uh, exhibiting career, the commercial gallery career going as I'm teaching. So really, I kind of started out here in Charlotte. Um, and I started out in a small gallery. It was the first one I ever showed at over on Providence Road called Providence Gallery. It's still around. It's uh, over by Queens College near the Manor Theater. Um, from there, I started exhibiting at another small gallery in Charlotte called Renee George, and it's no longer there. They didn't uh, outlast the recession. So, uh, but I did move on to showing other places. So I, I did an MFA um, overseas at a school called Goldsmiths College in London, and they were really good about promoting our final show. We had lots of um, business people and we had lots of uh, gallery owners come to the exhibition and kind of um, scout new talent. So um, I got a couple of opportunities to exhibit and then eventually a few galleries overseas out of that. And I've continued to exhibit with them. So, um, okay. So I'll talk a little bit about how to seek out some exhibition opportunities in commercial spaces. And then I'll transition over to talk about non-commercial spaces too. And I think really when you're starting out, there's a couple of questions that are good for you to ask of yourself um, at this stage. And it's about what's realistic at this stage, really. Um, you know, what do you want out of your career, really? Um, I know it's early to know entirely, but it's good to ask yourself at this stage. It's 
good to set some goals and think about, do you want to show in a commercial space eventually? Do you want to show at more of um, a kind of, you know, sub Rosa, you know, creative space that is maybe anti-commercial? That's viable too. We can talk about those ways to do that. Um, but it's good to have an idea or know a little bit about what you want to do. My only advice about that would be um, maybe to not write things off too early, you know, um, have kind of like a don't knock it till you try it attitude about applying to exhibitions. I'd apply to as many as you can try to cast the net wide um, because, you know, for instance, you might be thinking that you don't want to exhibit in a commercial space at this point in your career. But then once you start exhibiting through commercial spaces a bit more, you might realize that they're the road to getting into um, established museums. So like if you eventually want to have that group or solo show at a museum here in Charlotte, well, usually they're scouting for, uh, you know, artists, talent around the commercial galleries in Charlotte and at a national level, too. So it's hard you know, to get there if you're not going to go down that road through the commercial galleries. So I really recommend casting the net wide and not turning anything down at this point when it comes your way. And then later on, you can begin to be um, a bit more selective about your applications. Um, I also, I'm kind of assuming that uh, people are coming here from different levels, like there's some people from Painting One that I see, there might be some people from Thesis joining too, and really no matter what point of your career you're at, when you feel strongly about your work and you feel like you have it all together and you're ready to show it, I think it's really important to um, go after uh, opportunities with confidence just feel good about what you've done um, and just decide that you're gonna go for it and put yourself out there, you know, kind of um, proceed with confidence and have a take no prisoners attitude. Okay, so I wanna kind of start off by talking about some of the expectations across the board at these commercial gallery spaces. And I'm talking about places such as Hodges Taylor Gallery. These are like, you know, reputable, established galleries. I'm using Charlotte examples to begin with here because um, it's convenient. But these are galleries that have been established and have been around for 30, 40 years. Um, and so I'm thinking of places like the New Gallery, Hodges, Taylor, others, where um, they're really established spaces, right? So um, kind of like top tier for what Charlotte has, like a lot of artists are trying to get into them. So most of them just across the board are gonna be looking for um, artists with a BFA degree and um, sometimes an MFA degree too. And I just wanna give a little word of caution here, which is, um, okay, like off the record, but on the record, I have gone to some talks around Charlotte where they've had like panel discussions with gallerists or you know gallery owners. And, um, and they've said that it's not important to them what kind of a degree um, an artist has that they only look at the work, but I promise you, if you start doing some investigations, um, you know, look up the work online, look at the up the artists. A lot of them have BFAs, a lot of them have MFAs too. So, um, you know, kind of look it up yourself um, and make up your own mind about that. But they're also going to be expecting a strong uh, portfolio of work from you, probably about fifteen to twenty pieces. Um, enough for you to have a little bit of work out, like to last the year out. So you have a bit of inventory. Um, once you start to sell, you can go back to your reserves there. Um, so many people who are um, showing in galleries such as Hodges Taylor will have about five to 10 years of exhibition records before they even say hello, like to the gallerist, before they even you know, come looking for opportunities to exhibit at that gallery. So that's the kind of context that these artists exhibiting in these places are in, right? This is um, the kind of framework that the gallery owner is gonna be looking at you in. You have to kind of match up to this um, to some, some degree. So I think this is kind of good to know going into it. Okay, so that's why I say that it's important to set goals for yourself at this point in your career and also be realistic that you're approaching the right place at the right point in your development too. It's good to do a bit of reconnaissance work, go in, uh, you know, go online, look up the gallery before you approach the gallery and see who's there, um, investigate what kind of exhibition records the people showing there have. Um, it's worth it to Google the gallery artists' CVs before you apply. And let me just say, you know, you can really 
cut your losses this way, right? Like by going in and not wasting your time too. Um, and I, I, I do have some examples for you. So let me kind of stick with Hodges Taylor for a second here. Um, so this is basically if you open up the, the Hodges Taylor main page and you go to their artist partners, these are all the artists who work with the gallery. If you're on the actual website, you can hover over each of these pictures and this is the artist's um, individual page basically. So if you click on these, it'll take you to links for individual artists, artist statements, their resume or their CV and their artist bio too. So this is a good way for you to learn about the gallery through these artists who are showing there, right? Okay, so if I you know, click on Elizabeth Alexander's, it pulls up her artist page, here's her CV and a little, um, you know, like an image of her work. And uh, for those of you who might not know, uh, you know, a CV is basically um, kind of like a resume for artists, especially for their exhibitions. It'll have information on the artist's education, um, on solo and uh, group exhibitions that they've been in. And let me just make a little side note that Suzanne is an amazing resource for writing CVs and resumes. I've had her come back to my senior seminar class a couple of times. So she's, you know, it's an excellent idea to contact the Career Center if you want to get these things kind of up and going. But if you look at Elizabeth Alexander's CV here, um, kind of in detail, you can see that she has an MFA uh, in sculpture from Cranbrook Academy. And this is really a, a top tier school. And I, I haven't looked up the official list of like top programs in a while, but the last I checked, I, I do think they were in the top 15 or the top 20 or something. So, you know, this is an accomplishment. Also, she has a BFA with distinction. If you go down here and you look at some of the public collections that she's been in, you know, you can see that she's not only exhibited at the Mint Museum in Charlotte, but she's also in their collection, right? So that's like what she's starting out. This is where the gallery is starting out. Um, she's been in about 11 or so selected solo shows. And these are just selected shows, not like all the shows that she's been in. So keep that in mind. And then she's been in numerous, uh, uh, you know, select group exhibitions too. So this is what we're working with. And this is kind of like the lens that the gallery is going to be looking at you through. And it's good to know that when you approach them. So, you know, do your kind of legwork before you approach the gallery, um, before you start promoting yourself. Okay. All right. So another important way, I think, to get to know these galleries and places that you might want to exhibit is um, simply to visit which sounds very simple, but it's easy these days to like kind of sit around online and just look at websites. And a lot of this advice, by the way, is for post COVID, like out of, you know, after we're out of this mess, like be careful when you visit places, obviously, but hopefully when the world is up and running again, you can come in through the doors and see these spaces yourself. Um, I would really recommend to try to go to uh, some gallery openings and not just visit the gallery that you wanna get into once, but maybe two or three times or more. So you really get to know them. And I'll just say, you know, if you're an introvert like me, and it's kind of hard to go to these, you know, exhibition openings, it can be a very awkward thing, but there's some ways around it, like, you know, that that awkward social feeling. And I've, I've always thought too, that they need to do um, some kind of survey if they could about the kinds of people who like to go to gallery openings and feel like 100% comfortable. Like, I wonder if out of 100 people who go to an, an, an opening, like if five people feel completely comfortable <laughs> being there, it must be a really small number. And then I think a lot of others of us kind of like shuffle around and, you know, we feel uncomfortable and might be on our phones, but it does get easier, you know, as you get some experience and you start to know more people in the art scene in Charlotte. So my recommendation would be starting out trying to make yourself go to these things. Um, if you just invite a friend or two, maybe from the program here, maybe another artist, so you feel like you have a support system going to these openings. Um, a word to the wise on this is that this is probably the worst time to talk to a gallery owner. Um, and uh, the opening night is just a super busy time for the gallery owner. So they're going to be running around trying to make sure that the opening is going smoothly. 
They're going to be trying to like act like a social butterfly, talk to collectors, talk to artists who are already showing in their group, or they call it their stable and their artist stable. Um, they're going to be trying to promote those artists and busy trying to find the artwork a good home, right? So they're going to be feeling distracted and maybe even a little annoyed if you're an outside artist, like trying to get into the gallery at that point, because you're distracting them from selling the work on the opening night. So I think probably the best thing to do is just like enjoy the opening. You know, if there's a live performance or some music, you know, try not to like drink all the gallery wine, like they'll remember you if you do that. But just kind of relax, enjoy yourself, look at the art, see who shows there, scope it out, right? Um, don't worry about meeting the gallery owner on the opening night, just enjoy. And then I would recommend come back later and probably a better approach to promote what you do is to um, go back on a day when the gallery is kind of empty, maybe like on a Tuesday or Wednesday, midday, mid morning or something, and try to talk to the gallery staff a little bit. Try to talk to the person who works the desk. And if they don't look busy and if they'll take a little bit of time to talk to you, a lot of times they'll even show you around the exhibit or talk about the artists that they show. And then eventually you can kind of drop the fact that you're an artist too and talk about what you do and subtly you know, promote yourself and maybe show them some images on, on your phone that you have of your work and talk about your portfolio. So you kind of want to do it in steps so that the gallery owner and the staff don't feel like you're accosting them. A lot of this is really sort of common sense, but it might be worth you know iterating um, some of these things. Um, I do want to mention that with commercial galleries, um, in my experience, I think a lot of things, I think a lot of like success has to do with um, talking to the appropriate person at the appropriate time, or um, that might even sound too complicated. Like maybe a better way of putting that is um, not bothering people when they're busy, right? So um, it's it's good to have good timing with these when you have the right conversations. And I, I should mention, um, there's a theory that I don't necessarily subscribe to 100%, but I have heard other artists talk about approaching galleries this way. So some people believe that if you're trying to get your work into a gallery, that you should cut out the middleman. And that means that you should go directly to the gallery owner and kind of bypass the person who sits behind the desk because the gallery attendant, the person who sits behind the desk, or at least the thought is, that they're there to kind of like keep out the riffraff, like from, you know, keep artists from coming off the street, people like us from coming off the street and distracting the gallery owner at a time when they're talking to collectors or answering emails. And um, so they can do their important work in the back room, like whatever they do. And so I don't necessarily believe that you shouldn't talk to the gallery attendant. I've actually had a lot of success, not just going right to the owner, but making a little bit of time to talk to the person who works the desk. Um, you know, you can talk a little bit about the work in the gallery and other events that you've been to. If you went to the gallery opening, talk about the live performance that you saw. Um, and then you can share a little bit of work that you've done. And for me, I've done this in the past. And then the gallery attendant has introduced me or shown my work to the gallery owner. So I think all I'm saying is, you know, just do it at the right time when the gallery attendant or, you know, the gallery owner isn't busy you know, answering emails or something, do it when it's a slow day. And you might even have to come back, you know, like on a better day when they're not busy so that you can have their full attention and hopefully promote what you do to them. I hope all of this is anyway, yeah, making sense so far. Okay, so I just have a few summary points here for approaching a gallery. Hopefully you'll have that uh, portfolio of about 15 to 20 works, ideally, professionally labeled so they know exactly what they're working at, looking at. And uh, a thing I, I meant to mention here too is you probably want to have your dimensions included in your labels um, within your portfolio. And again, you know, uh, follow up with, with me or with Suzanne, the Career Center, um, about getting your resume and your artist statement and artist bio in order. And um, and we do cover those things in senior seminar too. So those things are kind of in the works if you're a student in the program. Uh, and then contact the owner. That's one way you can go about it or try to go um, on a slow day to the gallery and talk to the gallery attendant and tell a little bit about what you do. 
um, see if they'll set up a studio visit with you or if you can bring some work into the gallery to set up and show them. Um, okay, and better yet, try to go to the gallery a couple times and get to know um, the people who work there and what they do. The worst thing I think you can do is show up and not even know what the name is on the door and then just showing like random pictures of half finished works and stuff like that on your phone. I yeah, definitely wouldn't recommend that. Okay, so I also want to make an important point here, which is I feel like I'm giving you guys a lot of um, precautions or something. And I think it's important to say that despite all these things, you should still try, right? Like still, it's important to try with these commercial galleries if this is what you want to do. And the point here being that they're not only representing established mid-career established artists who have long resumes, they're looking for young talent too, right? They're like looking for young blood. They're looking for the diamond in the rough that they can um, work with and scoop up before other galleries scoop that person up and then help you develop your career. So they want uh, emerging artists as well. It's just, I, you know, I do a little research ahead of time, look at the artists that show at these galleries. I wouldn't approach uh, Gerald Melford's gallery, for instance, um, when you're just starting out because he shows a lot of international established artists, right? Um, I wouldn't go to the McCall Center starting out and try to show there. There's other places, for instance, maybe try Providence Gallery. Um, and Providence Gallery is a great place. They represent a lot of local artists, emerging artists. They do have a frame shop in one room. They have the gallery in another room. They're super artist friendly people and very supportive there. And I think it'd be a great place to approach and start out. Um, also Goodyear Arts, which I think a lot of you guys are already familiar with this program, but I would try to go to some of the open studios, meet some of the artists there. Um, you could even collaborate with some of these people, put together a proposal, and they do have a gallery space at Goodyear. So if they accept your proposal, then you could have a group show there maybe, and that'd be a wonderful way to start out. Um, there's lots and lots of ways. You know, a, a past student, uh, an, alum, an alumna of the program, Holly Keough, she used to work at uh, Slate Interior. So some of these like uh, interior design stores around Charlotte actually have wall space where you can rent a wall space for cheap for about a month and you can display your artwork on the wall and kind of see how it goes, right? You can see if you get a bit of a following or, you know, if your work is doing well and some of it sells. Then at that point, once you get a once you get a couple of you know items on your resume, right, and you feel comfortable, then it's a good time to go into the more established, um, yeah, gallery space. And and I'm just showing this like awesome door at Goodyear, um, partly because I just love it. But um, but yeah, but I, I guess like maybe the the last point I want to make before I move on a little bit from commercial gallery spaces is here. I, I think a lot of people get turned off to commercial gallery spaces um, because they have a bad experience. Um, it's almost like I think they go into the gallery and um, without knowing the culture, right? They start talking to the gallery owner and they're not prepared. It reminds me a little bit of like Americans when they go overseas to countries they've never visited before and they literally learn like, nothing about that country's culture or the language and you know or how to order off the menu and they're just being really rude without knowing it and um, I think the more that you learn about the place the better you come off looking to that person it's like Americans going into a Parisian store or something and you know like insulting the store clerk because they're just accosting them by speaking English and interrupting their conversation and the store clerk is going like bad like what is wrong with you and then the Americans like leave and think that Parisians are rude or something. So I think it's just about knowing the culture of, yeah, of the gallery a little bit, a little bit more and just little steps, like little effort can go a long way with these things. Okay, so, all right, what do you do if you um, are building your resume before you um, approach an established commercial gallery? So creating your own show, is a great option on the way here. So I'll talk about that just a little bit. And I'm gonna um, talk a little bit from personal experience because I hope this helps you out. So, um, okay, like I mentioned, you know, I, I show on commercial spaces. I've con continued to show at these 
galleries um, and they're owned by really wonderful people, really supportive people. Um, and, you know, they're business people who love to promote artists and I love working with them and I, I like really can't say enough good things about them. But maybe a little ca caveat here for you is that I think you'll find when you start exhibiting in commercial spaces that the gallery will will normally have two or three artists who um, are like killing it. Like they sell out every gallery show, um, everything they touch turns to gold. Like, you know, they just do so well. They're making most of the revenue for the gallery. So then the gallery prioritizes those artists, especially on their exhibition schedule. So, you know, no matter what stage you're at in your career, if you're ready to have a show, maybe in that in between time, and you can't get onto the gallery calendar that they're they're scheduling out, a good option is just to do your own thing, like to put your own show together. Um, and it can be in conjunction with the commercial career like this too. And so this is a thing that my colleague in painting, Maya Godlewska and I did last year. Um, we had a, a group painting exhibition where we got six painters together um, at APT Gallery in London. And it feels like this has been five years ago because it feels like COVID has been five years or 10 years or something. I can't believe it was just last October to November, but this is the gallery space. This is Maya and then uh, my friend Sally's way in the background there. She's in that kind of like cloud blue um, sweater or something, jacket. And uh, and so she was an artist who participated in the show. So we got, what we did, what we did to start out with is Maya and I just had some basic conversations like about our work, about common threads between our works. We um, went to uh, the, the cafeteria here on campus, sat and talked about these things, talked about possible themes, started out really simple about how we're both interested in different types of painting, interested in objects, identity, and kind of grew a list. And then eventually we had a couple of paragraphs that we were able to turn into a proposal. And usually a gallery uh, proposal is about a page long. Um, and I can talk more about that too um, after this is over, if you guys have any questions about what a proposal kind of looks like. But so once we had our proposal, we started corresponding with our friend Sally, who lives in London, and she knows spaces that we could apply to. And so she gave us a long list of places that she scoped out. And these were project spaces that would take show proposals and they would put the gallery show on for free for you if you were accepted. So it was a competitive process, but once you know we applied to like 15 or something, we got into a couple that we really liked and they fully supported us, supported us by you know sharing us on their Instagram page, throwing an opening for us, giving us a free space to exhibit in all these kinds of things. Um, and so we eventually grew the show to about six people. Oh, I just, I put this up because this is where it is in London in this kind of Southeast area of like Lewisham. Um, so these are some pictures from the exhibit. And so we, we did have the exhibition and it was really well um, attended because it ran concurrent with a local festival an art festival, we had about 100 people visit each day around around that, and it ran for three weeks. So, um, you know, like, I'm just extremely proud of how we all collaborated on this show. It feels like it brought the best out in everybody, like nobody had an ego about it. And like, I don't, I'm not a homeowner or anything, but I imagine this is what it feels like to like buy your first house or something and own it. Like, <laughs> I just feel really happy with how this exhibit panned out. And I, I have a couple of images to show you guys. So each of the artists came in for the private view, took the train, took a plane if they had to get there, and everybody supported the project and collaborated on it. Um, the show did get reviewed in a local art magazine, and then it led to other shows. So we got some other shows by word of mouth. So we'll have another iteration of this in Poland, and then we'll have another iteration of it the following year at a university gallery in San Jose. So my, my point here, my point really to you is that you can do this too. And, you know, it's really about getting a proposal written, written getting other people to look at it. And when you feel like you have it in good shape, you can you know, 
cycle it to as many different people as you want, you know, for years until you get into the place that you want to get into that will really support you. So um, I highly recommend just like pushing yourself to get that proposal written and uh, seeing what kind of places respond to it. And if this is the kind of thing that um, you are interested in doing, there's some avenues to look to apply to these kinds of spaces. So um, places to look for exhibition opportunities are look for project spaces. And these are all places that will um, basically, they'd be free like for you to put the show on. There's other options, which are you could have your, you could convert a raw space, right? That you convert into a space that you wanna have a show, but the cheaper uh, opportunities come this way by like looking for exhibition opportunities, looking for juried shows, looking for university spaces too because a lot of times universities will give you um, funding to maybe travel, maybe ship your work and have the exhibition. Um, really good resource to know about for looking for exhibition opportunities is just simply the College Art Association or um, CAA for short. And this is uh, an organization that kind of becomes your best friend when you go into the academic world, the teaching world, and also when you're looking for exhibitions. Um, so they have a, an annual conference where they have sessions where experts talk about art and art history. Um, there's career service uh, uh, talks there too for artists. And um, they kind of rotate um, among Los Angeles and Chicago, New York and Washington. I think this year they had to go online because of COVID but um, it's worth it to look into the conference because there's student fees that are quite cheaper. And you actually don't even have to um, travel. You don't have to go to the annual conference to use their website. You can use the website for free. And this is what the main page looks like. Um, you can search for jobs and opportunities if you go here on the navigation strip. So jobs and opportunities, if you go to the very bottom of the page, there's opportunities listed here, and then you can hit this to browse opportunities. And then page after page after page, this is just one page of opportunities that you'll see, and they'll literally be like 50 or something, and they continuously update them. Um, usually if you check in like at the end of the week, they'll already have new opportunities up. And it's a good way to, again, search for um, university show opportunities or, um, you know, project spaces, group shows, um, solo shows, you name it, juried exhibitions, too. And if any of you guys are interested in other ways, like um, other websites that you can use to search for ex exhibition opportunities, just let me know later. Send me an email and I can send you a list or Suzanne a list, whatever is the the easiest way to do that, because there's a lot of, of websites that you can use besides CAA too. That's just kind of the one that I end up using the most. Okay, Suzanne, am I already like way over time? No, you're doing great. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm kind of, I'll wind down here. Okay, so, all right. There are options of places to look around Charlotte. I thought maybe I'd wind down by talking about a few of those. And again, you could also like convert a raw space if you wanted to, like some past students in our program have done amazing things in abandoned spaces around the NODA area and converted them for like a week or two weeks or whatever and had an exhibition run there and promoted it. And it's just been insane. Like some of the most amazing kind of collaborative opportunities I've ever seen. Um, students have just done on their own. But these are maybe easier ways to go about it too, where they're not traditional commercial gallery spaces, but these places will pay, will help you have your show making it somewhat free, like either free or mostly free for you. Um, so some places around Charlotte that I can think of. First one, which I'm sure you already know by now, I won't talk long about because I already mentioned them, but Goodyear Arts, you know, just remember um, they have that gallery space to utilize. Um, they uh, have very artist friendly owners. They kind of started out back in uh, 2014 by putting artists into abandoned buildings, um, utilizing abandoned buildings around Charlotte by creating 
artist studios in them. And then it becomes a win-win situation for like the building owners and the artists because the properties have been vacated and the building owners want to make the buildings look like they're being occupied, you know, so they don't get vandalized and so they don't su suffer a lot of, um, you know, disuse or anything. So um, they've come around, I think, to their third location. Uh, they, they got their name because they started out at the Goodyear Tire Company when it was vacated. And so they've kind of inherited that name and kept it as they've moved from space to space. And now they're on the north side of town in Camp North End, and they have somewhat of a permanent space there. So I definitely would 100% check them out, go to their open studios, get to know some of them. A lot of them are emerging artists, great collaboration opportunities. And I sometimes wonder why more UNCC students don't use that resource over at, at Goodyear. So, um, you know, there's ways to utilize their gallery for sure. And I think they want more collaboration with UNCC. So, okay, Southern Tiger Collective is another one. I haven't visited them in a little while. I've kind of been a hermit homebody since COVID. And I think it's been about a year and a half, maybe two years since I visited Southern Tiger Collective. Um, they specialize in mural design. So they're a, collabor a collaborative op uh, operation who paints murals around Charlotte. They do a little screen printing. They do some t-shirt making, some designing, but they have a gallery space as well. And they, I believe they moved from Noda to um, a space around a uh, South End area, like around Tryon. So I think they're a little bit closer to Uptown now, and they even have a bigger gallery space. So I think if you talk to them, you can talk about submitting a show proposal and maybe putting on a group or solo exhibition with them. When I talked to them a little while ago, um, I think I went in like in a January and I was asking them how booked up their exhibition schedule was. And they said it wasn't very booked up and they were already looking for artists for like February and March, which is incredible because places sometimes book their exhibition calendars like a year out or two years out. It can really fill up. So um, this is a good one to know about. And I think, you know, they sounded really excited to work with UNCC students. Another one that I kind of blundered into is called the Artisan's Palette. And um, I worried about some of these places like, uh, you know, after COVID, I wondered if some of them shut down. But I, I did look them up recently and it's it's still around. It's still plugging away. And the other ones that I'm showing you are as far as I know or have been able to find out recently. But the Artisan's Palette and it's spelled palette like the thing in your mouth, like not the thing that a painter holds because it's a restaurant and the owner runs a gallery um, in the space behind the restaurant. It's basically, it's all connected, but the gallery is in a separate room behind the dining room of the restaurant. They're a very artist friendly space. The gallery itself um, is probably, from what I remember, is about the size of like the row upper gallery behind the mezzanine, if you've ever been in the building. So it's kind of small but it's big enough to have a solo or maybe a small group show with like two or three artists. It's free, um, I, I, you know, to use the space. I think she does take a small commission off the work, but it's something really small. Um, and I think it's really just about her promoting the space to get people in to look at the work and help promote you too. So um, that's another one to investigate. Um, Pura Vida, which uh, is a boutique, um, that's in the Noda area. And so they're a boutique kind of in the front room, and then they have a small gallery space in the back room. And it's kind of a raw space too. It's not extremely finished, but it would be um, a perfect place to have a solo exhibition. I've actually seen some gallery artists who, um, before they started exhibiting at commercial spaces, had some small solos um, at Pura Vida in that back room. So that's another good one to kind of utilize if you can get in touch with them. Also, let me just say, like, if I can help facilitate any meetings for you guys who are interested with this, I don't mind like writing them to introduce you. So definitely contact me if you if you'd like to go about this. Okay, um, tattoo shops, you know, ones like Canvas Tattoo is a really good low stakes place to start out. Um, often they'll have an art gallery kind of you know, like in the front, like with the tattoo, like studio and in, in the back. 
and um, you can uh, use them for free. So they're good people to contact. Halo Healing, Halo's Healing Arts Lounge uh, off like Central Avenue near Hawthorne is another good one uh, to maybe look into. Um, but I'd, I'd try some of these things if you're if you're really gung ho about like getting your own exhibition started. Another kind of underutilized resource. I've only seen a couple students uh, really pursue an exhibition at Spirit Square, but Spirit Square um, uptown, it's an art center uptown, which is uh, really set up for performing arts and they have some galleries and it's connected to the Blumenthal Performing Arts Center, um, but they have several galleries that are actually rentable. So these aren't completely free, but they have one that's something like um, 3,000 square feet. They have two that are about 1,500 square feet the last time that I looked for some students. And like I said, they're not free. Um, you do have to pay to rent them out, but if my memory serves me well, I think they're um, like maybe $400 or $500 a month. So I know that sounds steep, like if you were gonna have a, a solo exhibition there, but if you were to maybe have a group exhibition and get about 10 people or so, 12 people involved, then you could really cut that cost down so that people are only paying like $40 or $35 or something to, to put on this group exhibition. Um, and you get a ton of foot traffic by all the people who are going to see the performances and going uptown for events. So that's a good one to know about. And I think I'll just kind of end here, Suzanne. I hope that these have been some ideas that you guys can investigate further and maybe look into for some show spaces. But but yeah, Andy, that's for, been phenomenal. Oh, I always thanks. learned so much from each of your presentations. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. Such a great resource. 